Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Betaflight 4.2, some rigs I've been working on, gonna show you my PIDs, what I've been doing with that on 4.2. Talk about a little issue that I had and how I finally got that sorted out or actually how the issue sorted itself out for me. And then we're gonna take a look at a little bit of flight footage of all this stuff. So if you like regular FPV content, models, RC, all that kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button. I try to upload a couple times a week, maybe sometimes three if you're lucky. So give me a like, give me a sub. Let's get on with this video. So I started out the week with everything inside here and it was put into the Hyperlow RS Plus here, which is a beautiful frame. Carbon, really nice. Still a little bit of carbon dust on there, hence the gloves. Falco X was getting this. Got the same thing on Betaflight 4.2 as well. So I ended up moving everything to a Source 1 frame and then this happened. So the whole time it was this motor and if you take a look there you can see that this thing just totally was separated i thought it sounded a little bit janky on the bench here when i was putting things together and doing motor tests and everything like that but everything looked fine in my black box logs so i'm not 100 percent sure what happened but anyway I took a motor off of my falco x rig put it on there and these are the results here that we'll go over and you can take a look at those so now I put that back on here just because if there's one rig that I want running, it's this one. It's good old reliable Falco X. Everything else is on here. I just know how this thing flies and all that. This still has Betaflight 4.2 on it and this does as well. Both have the exact same PIDs that I've been flying. Right now I think this one flies a little bit better than this one did uh, just because this is newer stuff and this the Betaflight seems to work a lot better on older stuff, believe it or not. I think a really clean setup just brings out a lot more of the issues that uh, you might have. So you have to put a little bit of more work into actual tuning it. So we've got all kinds of flight controllers, ESCs here. We got this frame. I'm not 100% sure what we're going to do with it. Also have one of the 533 tiny trainers coming. So that's probably what we'll work with next here on the bench. We'll wait and see what happens. Who knows? So it's a really great lesson to be learned here because when you just start tuning and playing with numbers and you're not getting a positive change, then you know that there is something else going on. I probably flew... 30 to 35 packs through both of these ships combined until that happened with that motor. But the motor had that, not twitch, but I would get that wobble, you know, which could have been a PID problem, something with, uh, who knows, feed forward or whatever. But I tried all the different presets on Falco X. I tried all kinds of stuff on Betaflight and nothing happened until the motor actually gave out. And now problem is solved. So let's take a look at this Betaflight tuning guide and get into some of the little nitty gritty details and some things that I have been doing on this ship with 4.2. Don't worry, we're not going to read through this whole thing. So Betaflight we know is kind of on an, a six month schedule now with maintenance stuff in between. They're kind of on a TikTok cycle, in my opinion, kind of like uh, Apple, you know, where one year they come out with the iPhone 10. And then the next year, the 10R, and then after that, the 11. So, you know, every year they're making these big updates. So 4.0 was kind of like your tick or talk, whichever side of the TikTok you're on. Kind of gave us a lot of improvements, a lot of stability, stuff like that. 4.1 was the game changer. That gave us the RPM filter and even more changes. 4.2 kind of is that same cycle as 4.0. 
Some might argue that or disagree, but there's nothing super special in 4.2, but there's a lot of things, over 250 some things that were addressed or improved in Betaflight 4.2. Now, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? I guess that's up for people like myself and you to decide. So if you made it this far, let's take a look at the meat potatoes. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for me if you would. Check out the affiliate links below. So here's the new configurator, 10.7 RC1. Nice black look, really like all that kind of stuff. When you first plug in, you're gonna to have to calibrate your accelerometer and all that kind of stuff. And the configuration tab, all of this pretty much is the same. The only difference is you're locked in gyro right now. So nothing really to talk about there. Power battery, same thing. PID tuning, this is where things get a little bit different. And before we take a look at the PIDs, let's take a look at the rate settings. So now we have all these different weight rates to pick from. Race flight, kids, actual, quick rates, beta flight, whatever. I have opted for the quick rates setting and I really like this. And I do want to let you know that these numbers do transfer over into the OSD. So if you make a change here on your RC rate or something like that, it will actually change there. The only thing that I don't see in the OSD is the ability to change the max rate. So you can change your expo and your RC rate, but not the, the max rate. I could be wrong. So I know a lot of people have actually tried my PIDs before and filter settings and have liked it. There's really nothing special about the filter settings. It's all about coming down to knowing your ship. I know that these Source 1s have great noise profiles on them. So really none of this is going to change. It hasn't changed since 4.1 since I turned on the RPM filtering it and all that kind of stuff. I have done some stuff behind the scenes in the CLI that Mark has recommended in some of his videos. I'm not going to go over any of that stuff right now because it's probably a little bit too advanced for a lot of you. I realize a lot of people that watch these videos are kind of new and don't want to be overwhelmed. But if you want to study up, definitely start with Mark's videos over the past year. Start watching it and watch the progression of Betaflight and it will help you understand a lot of this stuff a lot. So here are my current PIDs you can see. And I know most people might be watching on mobile, so I will read them to you. On my P's, we've got 70, 70, 90. On my I's, 85, 85, 90. I am running D min, so on my max, I have 65s. On the D min, I have 40s. And on feed forward, I have 200, 200, and 120. I have I term relax set to 10 at set point. I'm gonna be playing with that a little bit. D min set to a gain of 20 with zero advance and anti-gravity is set to not 3.5 that should be 11 so we'll go ahead and change that real quick so let's just talk about all this real quick so i'm figuring so let's just talk about this stuff real quick and what my mythology is i'm carrying over pretty much a lot of the stuff that i had on 4.1 a lot of the theories and everything like that kind of goes against what the tuning guide says the tuning guide recommends to run more d and more d filtering which i don't want to run more filtering i want a less latent quad i know that i'm not getting a lot of d noise on this from looking at black boxes before i'm running d min in a d boost configuration Mark recommended this a long time ago. I'm not sure if he still likes to do this, but I, it really works for me. Um, everything's great. So basically you can see that my D gains will pretty much be running around 40 most of the time. And as long as the motors don't hit saturation on like punch outs and stuff, they will float up to, you know, in the high fifties, maybe lower sixties at the most. So one thing that I do know is that I finally have fell in love with feed forward. Feed forward used to basically scare me because I didn't understand it, but now I know that I need it. Um, I used to run my feed forward at like fifties. And then if I put it at a hundred, all of a sudden it just felt like the quad was just like super crazy and super responsive. And that's because it was because feed forward was pushing RP gains. So it was basically help pushing your craft into the moves 
So the thing that I've learned over, oh, I don't know, the past couple months of playing with Betaflight, especially in the past week, is that you really need to learn to fly your rates and not let the PIDs dictate your rates. So you can always change your rates afterwards to fit the PIDs that mean that meet meet the needs of your quad. So finding your P to D ratio, which you can see mine's kind of like 1.3, 1.4 to one, I guess you could say, um, 70 to 40, not the D max. Uh, finding that and then going through and tuning stuff. I used to run uh, higher eye gains. I did notice I was getting a lot of um, eye turn buildup, like during hard cornering and stuff like that. And I lowered those eye gains down a little bit, and that seems to be working really well. Uh, it's really cool now that anti gravity is not linked to the eye gains, so you can tune that independently. So I can crank up as much anti gravity as I want. And I know that I'm not going to have to run high eye gains to make it work better. So that's a super, super good thing. So the feed forward at 200, 200, 120, that's just kind of something I'm going off of what uh, Mark has talked about. I haven't looked at the actual logs on it. Now I'm betting that I do have some problems somewhere just based on the flight feel and the video. And the biggest thing is that I noticed that I'm still getting a little bit of like bounce back on some of my flips and rolls. It's really important to try to control your sticks. That's why one thing I do like about Falco X better, it's probably something that Betaflight is more responsive and better than Falco X, which is why I'm getting the bounce back so there's probably some numbers to change and stuff it's just sometimes you just don't want to deal with it like you just want a craft that flies really good and that's what this falco x1 does and as soon as i let off the stick it stops i don't get any bounce back or anything like that at all obviously other people's issues may differ in the receiver tab right here i've been playing with these RC smoothing uh, settings. I didn't like really what uh, the race freestyle, so I put things back to default for the most part, and I've been playing around with the auto smoothness setting. I, I try to figure out, so it's tough going back and forth between firmwares and testing one versus the other when one is written to fly a certain way versus the other and they have different ways of doing things. So between that and still trying to get used to the Tanko 2, playing with RC smoothness is something that is pretty important, I think, in the overall scheme of things now, especially since Betaflight has put so much effort to making it better. It's something I think we definitely need to understand a lot more, and I see Mark put a video out on it actually just now. So that will be a good watch. I'll have to watch that as soon as I am done with this. And that was a long one. Thanks for watching. Bye.